that is basically our plane right there. And everything must lie on the plane in order for the RP solver to work correctly. And that's a nice segue into the next section I'm going to talk about here, which is how do you get the best use out of your RP solvers? Now this is important because I've seen some really bad rigs that really do not set things up correctly. And whenever I've had to go back in and deal with it, it's caused me problems. And in fact, one of the things, uh, one thing I did in an older rig of mine uh, caused me problems. And um, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'll talk about that in a minute. But what we want to do is, is we're going to see how to get the best uh, reliability out of these RP handles. Now the first thing we need to, to talk about is, as I mentioned, you need three points in a plane to define a triangle. Well, in, for the IK handle, you actually need three vectors. Now, if I switch this to object mode, you'll see that your uh, manipulator is pointing right at the next joint. So it's aiming straight down the axis the twist axis to the next joint. Now if I select that one, the same thing there. Okay? And then of course the third vector is coming straight this way and, you, and the IK handle is actually drawing it. It's that green line right here at the edge of the triangle. I'm going to move the IK, move that up a little bit and you can still see it. So there's our third vector right there. So the first two are the joints and the third one is, this, is created by this pole vector constraint. Now, if your vectors are not set up this way so that they're all in the plane, you set up a pull vector constraint, it won't create a plane, and it will cause problems because the math won't work right. And I've seen rigs where, where uh, basically, instead of building them like this, they were built more like this. Um, like they were built in a straight line, and then somebody like um, kind of grabbed it, moved it in place, and then grabbed that and moved it in place. So as you can see, the vectors are all off. They're all like orientated to the world and stuff. And that can cause problems with the RP handle when it's trying to solve. Can you force an RP handle on it and make Maya work? Yes, but you're fighting it. And the idea really is to not fight with Maya. The idea is to work with her, not fight her. The second thing that you need to be aware of, and this also kind of, this one can hide if you're not careful. And the idea of, of a joint orientate. And if you come in here to the attribute editor, you'll see that we have almost minus 40 degrees in the joint orientate, but nothing in the rotation. If I unparent this, let's see if I can drag that down so you can see both at the same time. There's, there's the rotate, there's the joint orientate. If I unparent that, you'll see that the rotations have stayed, but the joint orientates have all jumped. Why has that happened? The joint orientate is Maya's built in mechanism to try to keep the joint, uh, its rotations in the same local space. If I parent it back, everything goes back to where I had it. So if you have a small kink in this, that's actually pulling it off the plane. And you can see that right here. Like if I give it a little five degrees, okay, maybe Z was the wrong axis to do that in. Um, and that should have been Z. Oh, you know why? Because we got the pull vector constraint on. It's not letting us. That's why. So let's kill that pull vector constraint real quick. Uh, outliner. No, that was a mistake. Uh, hypergraph connections. Okay, so I killed the pull vector constraint. Pull vector constraint was keeping me from illustrating what I was trying to illustrate, which is. I have a little bit of a 
bend and the joint orientate. Now, if you look at it, I got no rotates. The translates or the translates are still clean. You know, they're only on the down the joint axis, but it's not on the plane anymore. It's got a little kink to it. So you want to make sure that your joint orientates are only in the bend axis for this middle joint and your translates are only in the down the joint axis. And true story, I had an elbow on a character this built this way and I built it that way kind of not paying attention to what I was doing. And the character would, uh, he had a little PDA and he would hold it up to his, his face like so. kind of hold it up like this if you can imagine his arms here and his hands here and it would get to a certain pose and the wrist would start flipping out and I couldn't figure out why until I dug through it and I realized that there was uh, the joint orientates were not clean I had accidentally put a little bit of a bend in the elbow and that just caused a world of hurt so uh, I eventually had to lock the other two rotations so it would behave. Now notice that right now we're rotating in both the Y and the Z. Well, that was basically the problem I was having because I didn't want it to rotate in the Z. And if I take that, uh, if I just kind of reset this system, let's go back to the beginning here. So I'm I'm restarting it. So I'm all clean. I got no joint orientates, I got no anything like that. If I bend like that, better yet, let's put the pull vector on there. There we go. So now if I move it up like that, no matter what I do with this system, this joint is only going to rotate in the bend, in that Y axis right there. See, like that. All the other rotation is going to come from this top joint right here. Nothing I do is going to make a bend in any other direction. Now you notice the last time when I had that joint orientate with the Z, that wasn't true. And that was the problem I was having with that rig. Um, let's go ahead and put a little Degrees on it. Notice adding that kind of kind of put it in two axes now. And so now now it's kind of getting a little ill-defined. It's doing kind of whatever it wants to do to try to solve because it's trying to put them all in the same plane and it can't because you don't have all the vectors in the same plane to start with. So at this point you're fighting with Maya trying to get it to do what you want it to do and again you can do it I mean the Maya's not going to stop you but the math just isn't going to work as cleanly as you would want it to and so uh, basically to summarize you want to make sure your joint orientates are clean in other words that middle joint only has a bend uh, joint orientate in the bend axis and your translates are clean they're only translating in the down the joint axis. And if you do that, you're going to have much more reliable uh, results coming from your RP solver. Okay, so the first video, we uh, examined the problem. We understood what IKFK switching was doing in, in Maya and what we needed to do, or, or uh, why, it, it, why we need to have a solution. And in this video, we've looked through the different IK systems and we talked about what an RP solver really is and how to best set it up to get the most use out of it. So now we are ready to move on to the next section which is actually creating our our solution to get the IKFK switching uh, uh, to work. And so I'll see you in the next video.